So when I was setting the timing on my Galaxy, I was lecturing about the safety needed when you do it. Now that's because to set the timing you need it at idle, in gear, with the vacuum advance disconnected and plugged. And the real trick there is in gear, you can't do it by yourself. Please don't do it by yourself. Uh, what you need to do is set the parking brake, chalk the tires, have somebody sit in the driver's seat, and put it in reverse just in case the brakes fail. Uh, don't put it in drive that it runs you over. Make sure it goes away from you. Now, I got really impatient with an old car I had. It was a 1963 Thunderbird. Uh, similar engine to this, it's a 390 instead of a 352, but same family. And my wife was gone. I had time to finally work on the car, spend some time with it. So I went out to the garage, chalked the tires, set the parking brake, and put it in reverse, carefully got out. It wasn't going anywhere. I had a chance then to get my timing light, look at the timing, saw I was a bit retarded. Distributor was loose. Turned the distributor. Now that advanced the timing and the RPM went up by about three, 400. It just wasn't happy where it was. It just flew up and that was enough to hit the torque converter. Uh, stall and it wanted to go and it did go it crushed the little triangle uh, Chalk that I had with behind the tire it just flattened it and it started going out of my garage garage door was open and Gone I grabbed onto the radiator support and I went with it uh, I had a plan I grabbed on I was dragging uh, there were no houses, anything like here in my neighborhood. The houses are closer together than Michael Strahan's teeth. We're just right on top of each other. Before I was out, had uh, out of town, had two and a half acres, nobody behind me. There was a forest, a lake, and then another house. And it was heading towards all those things down a hill, through a bunch of trees, and towards a lake. So I was, I was holding onto it, trying to pull it, and I reached up and grabbed the coil wire and tried to pull the coil wire off to kill it. And I didn't get good enough grip, so all I did was get shocked really bad. Uh, those things run 10,000 volts or so. Uh, so still getting drugged behind the car. I think it ran over a rock and bashed my knee on it after the car did. And I finally got a hold of the coil wire and threw it off. And then I just rolled away because I knew at least it wasn't going to power away from me. It was just going to stop and roll. And it kept rolling. It hit a tree that was about out of all the trees, huge oak trees, maple, uh, linden trees. It hit a tiny little uh, maple tree about this big around and drove up over it and parked on top of it and there it stopped. So luckily it didn't even really, it didn't damage the car. There was a little, if you looked at the bumper, you could see a little bit of a, a reflection in the chrome, but that was it. I got really lucky and I was wearing flip-flops at the time. I was, I guess, trying to be David Freiberger, who was just lazy or something. And from dragging down the asphalt, my feet were just bloody and then packed with dirt. My knee was all bruised up from hitting that rock. And my wife comes home, and my car is in the driveway, parked on top of a tree, jacked up, and there I am with bloody feet, shorts on, uh, cutting out a tree from underneath the car with a chainsaw. We left for a half hour. What the hell did you do? And I was just frustrated at that point. I, said, I don't want to talk about it, but next time, uh, don't leave when I'm doing stuff so you can help me. Which didn't go over that well either. But that's the message is as soon as you touch that timing, all sorts of things can happen. Uh, you've seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Don't try to run it jacked up with the wheels up. It's not going to load the transmission down anyway and help you. Uh, you need it wheels down, somebody in the driver's seat, and I mean, wait for help. Uh, don't go dragging behind your beloved car getting shocked at 10,000 some volts.